Good morning again from the western mountains of Colorado, Colorado's high country. <laughs> and here we go with day 11 of the daily spread. Uh, this is intuitive paint with me. Um, I'm using this exercise to really just free myself and let myself play. Uh, for a while I got myself into thinking slash feeling slash panicking that I needed to be creating so much all the time, new things all the time, this, that. And, you know, I did Mermaid, so I was doing a full piece every day during Mermaid, and then some other things came up, some other projects. So I am allowing myself to be completely free, to just play with some supplies every day, and at the end of 30 days, hopefully, um, to be able to look back and notice growth, notice patterns, notice new openness, and during the process, um, I'm holding space for you to be able to alchemize some of the stuckness and expand into that space, as much space as possible, um, that space which is pure potential before form has been created. So um, we're going to ignite, reignite, slash ignite that beautiful place of pure possibility and uh, see what happens. So are you ready? Let's go. Today's setup, pretty much the same as always. My arm for holding my phone to record. My Carondage gouache pans. My handmade watercolor. Um, the set is handmade. The watercolors are not. Those are Daniel Smith watercolors. Gesso, coffee, water. And I found these yesterday at Carl's Pharmacy in Aspen. So if you've never been to Aspen, Carl's Pharmacy is kind of like the catch-all... I mean, it's a pharmacy, it's got art supplies, it's got business stuff, it's got um, toys, it's got health stuff, pretty much anything that you need. Um, and I happened upon this water-soluble graphite, so I'm so excited to play with it. And as our quick daily review, we had spread one, we had spread two, we had spread three, we had spread four, we had spread five, we had spread six. We had spread seven, we had spread eight, we had spread nine, and we had spread ten. And now we are moving on to day eleven. And that was just a quick little blip. I had to put something under one of the feet of this table because it was bouncing around. All right, so I am, I was inspired by yesterday's more uh, deliberate and precise and uh, meditative. I mean, it's always meditative for me, this kind of creating. Um, but I was inspired by yesterday's practice. And so I felt the urge to, um, just so you have something to watch, I'm just <laughs> activating my watercolors. Um, even though I don't know which colors I'm gonna use, I'm just dabbing some water into them so it can sit and activate them. And I've got some nice juicy color. Oh, Ronan. But anyway, yesterday's practice um, inspired me to just to be a little more deliberate. Um, you know, I went through you know the first week, I guess, or so was pretty um, movement oriented. I mean, I was moving all the time, and now I am going to slow down and see what happens when I do this. Um, I am actually kind of invoking the unfamiliar, uh, where we tend to get into ruts or patterns. Um, and it's not to say that if I create in a different way from my usual pattern that I'm changing my style. It's more of a recalibration. And that kind of expression, I kind of like that, so... Recalibration and expression. Um, I'm feeling drawn to this color. I don't know what this is. Ronan, stop. Well, we're gonna have some dog barks today. Sorry, guys. When you live in the mountains, there is wildlife and there's really nothing you can do about it. I'm gonna create this field of color here. I want to say this is a Prussian blue. Um, 
I really, really love both Payne's Gray and Prussian Blue in terms of blues. They're just so deep and dark and rich. Um, so I'm, you know, just allowing myself to play without a an agenda, without an agenda. So I've got that blue and I'm gonna go back to that same red, which I wanna say was quinacridone red. It's one of my favorite reds, um, but I'm not entirely sure. I actually didn't label these watercolor pans when I was filling them with watercolor, so. And this isn't watercolor paper either. This is just that Illo sketchbook, I-L-L-O. Um, you can get two of their books for $15 and um, they are fun I really like the format I think as I've mentioned in previous videos so this is kind of a little bit of wet and wet wet on wet wet on wet creating and where I'm putting the wet first I'm putting the wet on dry and then I'm grabbing another color and I'm painting and kind of mixing on the page not that it matters, this is not a technique lesson. Um, and then I'm really enjoying this texture that is coming out of that. Um, I am feeling like I wanna pull out this water-soluble graphite. So this is the 10B. <gasps> Let's see what happens. It's a nice, dark, juicy line. I'm mixing it with some of the graphite that's there. I mean, some of the watercolor. Mixing the graphite with some of the watercolor that's there. And bringing back a little more of the familiar mark making, the um, scribbles that I tend to be fond of. Slowly, I mean, not as frenzied as last week's was, I think. And now I'm just feeling like I want to add some different lines. And goodness, it is an active morning in the trees, apparently. And I'm sure if any of you have dogs at home that they are probably barking right alongside because that's what happens right <laughs> when when i'm listening to things at home and somebody's dog is barking then uh, my dog start barking it's just kind of an inevitable all right now i'm gonna play with that water solubility with my brush and ooh, that is cool so i'm just gonna mix that a little bit drag that down stucky stop honey Stop, guys. Please. 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 And they say, but we need to protect you from the big bad forest monsters. Uh, and I'm feeling like, I mean, I'm really covering a lot of this white space, which isn't intentional. I mean, I didn't set out to do that. Um, but I'm really liking the effect. Liking the effect. So here we go. Filling that in a little more. Ooh, that is nice and juicy. So water soluble graphite, ladies and gentlemen, this is the deal. This is the deal. Just feeling into that. I'm gonna grab some of this and extend it up top. And then I'm kind of picking up some watercolor from the watercolor that's already down and laying it 
on top of this other color or fields of mostly gray, I guess. bit more. I think I'm probably not going to use the gouache today. Um, I'm really liking the way this is going and I'm feeling, so then I feel like there might be another color of watercolor and you can tell I'm using the watercolor pretty thickly. So I tend to use my watercolor thickly as opposed to doing tons of transparent washes. I really love the pigment and that's why the um, professional watercolors are so important to me because they are such high pigment. Um, and so I get a lot of that. I feel like I'm going to take a little bit of this um, and maybe mix it with a little bit of that blue that I just had. And then we're just going to kind of come in here and lay in some lay in some extra marks here. Um, and I'm just sinking again into this uh, more pensive what? application. get a little bit more um, paint on my brush. So sometimes, like I mentioned yesterday, the quiet, it's okay for things to be quiet. You know, I'm moving more slowly right now. And um, I'm just really enjoying the moment by moment. Moment by moment. Right. Feeling into it. Dragging it out. I almost dipped my paintbrush in my coffee. Coffee break, coffee break, coffee break. And now what I'm feeling drawn to do is to play with gesso. Um, so gesso is often used as a primer if you've never used gesso before, but it can also be mixed with paints and stuff to give them more opacity. Um, so I'm feeling like adding some gesso in here. some more of this white. Um, so I'm basically using it like as a white paint. It does tend to have like a tooth or a texture to it. And 
just carry this across here. And so then I'm noticing I kind of like the layering effect. Um, so I'm adding a little more of that. And I'm not putting a whole bunch on my finger at once. Um, I'm kind of keeping it more transparent. Um, and then that gives me the freedom, um, you know, as I'm, and this isn't a conscious decision that I'm making. I'm just kind of, I guess, trying to explain in retrospect what I've done. <laughs> um, but I am noticing, so I didn't choose to do this transparently to get in a particular effect, um, but I'm noticing that it's making more transparent uh, marks. And then I'm layering on top which gives me more flexibility in terms of, there's a dog hair. Sometimes wonder if that should be a thing, like dog hair. <laughs> dog hair paintings. And kind of going back in. And again, today's session isn't meant, none of these sessions are meant to be long. It's meant to kind of be a, you know, I really hope that you feel inspired to get out your supplies. And I know that I always enjoy having other artists um, whom I am inspired by. Did I just say that? Am I repeating myself? Um, on in the background, kind of, you know, sometimes I'll put my laptop on and turn YouTube on and create. And I'm usually not creating what the other artist is creating in terms of following their formula or trying to produce something that looks like theirs, but, or and, I guess I should say. Um, I'm just creating my own thing at the same time, so. And um, as I mentioned, you know, these sessions are kind of just meant to be a catalyst. I hope that these light something up inside of you, maybe um, inspire you to try something new or to just give yourself the space to do something that you haven't done. Um, you've been afraid to do, um, afraid of judgment maybe, afraid of, oh my gosh, what if I spend all this time making something and then it's just not what I want it to be or it doesn't get approval and really going past the need for approval. Um, and the desire to change ourselves, to change our own unique creative expression in favor of approval. I think that is the biggest sadness for me is when I see other people doing that. And as I mentioned in you know, other videos, um, I actually lost a friend uh, last week because she wanted me to change my appearance and um, my unique expression of who I am, which is, you know, I question things and I'm curious about things and um, lo the whole love and light movement is frankly <laughs> bullshit <laughs> because it's just wallpapering over the things that are really there, you know, just like shutting the door on the big scary monster, but he's still in your closet. Um, and she wanted me to just pretend all the time and that's not who I am. I'm not a pretender. I think <laughs> one of my biggest gifts slash liabilities, um, I don't consider it a liability, but the people who are afraid of going deeper consider it a liability, um, is that I do, um, you know, I'm pretty frank. And um, I am always looking to evolve. And that evolution is not dependent on physical appearance. So now I'm just, I felt like spattering. Spattering is one of my other favorite things. And I'm gonna go up here. And up here, and up here, up here. And I don't want to get 
And I'm feeling like that is today's. So, um, let me set this up on the railing to dry. All right, first giving you a view of Mount Sopras in the morning. And then moving down to the spread. So this is today's spread. Um, the gesso and the watercolor which again like I said I use a lot of pigment so I really dig my brush in and load it up is all ready to start to dry although it's a little damp out this morning so it may take longer to dry today I'll probably leave it out here on the railing just all kinds of fun textures I really like this section right here with the marks of the graphite and the paint and all that yumminess. So let's give you another view. And that, my friends, is it for another day of the Daily Spread. Uh, if you haven't yet done so, I invite you to go back and flip through um, your spreads. As you've noticed, I do it at the beginning of every video, so I'm kind of doing it on a daily basis. Just flipping through and I think it's important that we recognize our own progress however incremental it may be even if it's just a tiny thing or even if we can't notice something visually um, there usually is some kind of energetic shift and so I think it's always curious to kind of take yourself through that journey again before you sit down and um, yeah just so you can Give yourself credit <laughs> for the evolution that is happening instead of denying that because there's not some big earth shattering oh my gosh all of a sudden you know everything is transformed it is a gradual process and it needs to be a gradual process because if we suddenly took away our entire foundation um, our entire sense of stability um, things would probably um, snowball <laughs> a little too quickly um, and so the idea is to give ourselves new support, which is what the idea of the daily spread exercise is, giving ourselves new inspiration, really sinking into opening and finding home in that space of infinite possibilities, where there is no agenda, where nothing has been formed yet, and allowing ourselves to really gather up that energy and then to fuel ourselves so we have this new sense of stability and support before we rip away any old paradigms. And it's not saying that we have to, you know, go on some big mission and rip away old paradigms, but I have found through my own experience that that will naturally happen as the new catalysts uh, arrive. So with that, I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful, wonderful day or night or whatever it happens to be for you. Life. <laughs> have a wonderful life.